Today on Co-op for Two, a 2021 holiday special. 15 great modern board game stocking stuffers, each available for $15 or less on Amazon. Okay, let's go over the ground rules. All of the games I'm going to suggest here are currently, as of December 12th, 2021, under $15 on Amazon.com and available for shipping before Christmas. They're all easy to learn. They're all very elegant. They're all interesting or unique or very funny or fun in their own way. And probably most importantly, these are all games that aren't made obsolete by a more expensive game. So sometimes in board game uh, lingo, people will say this game is a killer of this game, meaning if you have this one, you don't need this one anymore. All of these games are absolutely worth adding to your collection, regardless of the money you have. We'll talk about some cooperative games, some competitive games, and some party or team games. Okay, let's start with the co-op games. One of my absolute favorites, you can see it in some of the intros to the channel, and Greg and I have played it quite a bit, is Cahoots. This is a two to four player card game, um, goal completion game. So everyone's got a hand of cards, you can't say what you have, and you're trying to achieve these various goals that come out, like having alternating cards of certain colors. So each player changes the state of the world a little bit and you're trying to work together to achieve goals. You're able to talk about certain things but not, other, not others. It's a very enjoyable activity you can play while you're talking and catching up and it's fun, it's challenging. It's everything you want in a co-op game. Okay, next up, $15 on Amazon. Next up is The Crew, which is currently selling for $11 on Amazon. It's a three to five player trick-taking game with a gimmick. Now, trick-taking games, some people love them, some people hate them. I'm not a huge fan in general of trick-taking games, but this one just worked for me. Um, the gimmick in this game is that the book has uh, a campaign of like 50 uh, different games of increasing difficulty, adding new rules here and there, tweaking things, and becoming increasingly more challenging. Plays from three to five, but there is a special two-player set of rules that's a little easier, but is still enjoyable. And it's it's just a fun experience. They're quick games. They're like 10, 15-minute games often. And they involve some clever thinking about who's going to choose which goal to try to meet. And the goals are all things like you want to win this trick, you don't want to win this trick, here's how you have to win this trick. It's fascinating to see the, see the rule changes as you go. Okay, next up is a very unique little uh, experience called The Mind. $12 currently on Amazon, plays from 2 to 4. And it's a real-time game, so you don't take turns. You There's a set of deck of cards from 1 to 100. You divide those up among the players. And then you're trying to play the cards in sequence, but you can't communicate. And the only way you can decide whether you should play one of your cards or someone else is you're sort of waiting to see how long it takes everyone to put their card down. If you wait longer, you're suggesting you think someone else has a smaller card. A very unique experience, probably something that's going to wear out its welcome at some point, but you could get several sessions of a completely unique, fun, sometimes hilarious game experience out of it. That's the mind. Sticking with this theme of sort of unique experiences is Hanabi, a slightly older game. This is $9 currently on Amazon. There's a couple different versions. Plays from two to five. The sort of twist of this game is that everyone's holding their hand facing out. So you don't know what cards are in your hand, but you can see what cards are in everyone else's hands. And you're spending your turn either giving someone some information about their hand, like you have two green cards here, or you have, uh, you have one number two card in your hand. And so there's some real strategy and thinkiness to deciding when to give a clue, who to give it to, what kind of clue to give it to. And the economy is very tight. You have to pay to give a clue to someone and then you 
get a chip back when you discard a card or play a card. It's, there's a little bit of push your luck. It's very clever, it's very, very elegant. It's probably one of the more thinky uh, of the games here. So you sort of have to learn it with a group and play it over and over again, but a very deep, satisfying game, Hanabi. Okay, now we're gonna end with two little mystery games. I play a lot of heavy duty mystery games on this channel, but here are two smaller ones. Um, the first is one of the games from the Exit series. There's a dozen or two dozen of these now. They're all about $15 on Amazon currently. They play for however many people you can get around a table to play, but I'd say optimally two, three, maxing out at four. And they're puzzles. There's a little narrative thread through it, but puzzles, either crypto puzzles, math puzzles, or think outside the box little puzzles. Um, the Abandoned Cabin is a good box to buy. I think one of the more highly rated ones is uh, Dead, Dead Man on the Orient Train or something like that. Uh, I would highly recommend any of them, but, but this one or the Orient one are both excellent. And then for a really unique new uh, experience, there's this small box Echo series. These are running for $10 currently on Amazon. Again, this is a game where however many people you want to sit around the table works, but probably ideally two or three. In this game, you've got a whole bunch of cards, 18 or so cards, that you're trying to reassemble in the correct order to make sense of a story. And the cards have these nice pictures on them, but the only way you make sense out of it is you scan the picture uh, on your cell phone camera and you hear a little audio snippet related to the story related to that object. So you're constantly rescanning these images and then trying to piece together the mystery so that the audio clues would make sense. Totally unique experience. It's the only game here that uses an app, but um, you'll play it once an hour or two and then you're done with it. You don't have to play it again. There are two boxes currently. The cocktail I wouldn't recommend, not nearly as good as the dancer, the other box that I very much would recommend. So uh, Echoes, but get the dancer, that's $10. Probably two to three players would be ideal. Exit, get Abandoned Cabin or the Orient one, $15, again, two to three players. Hanabi, $9 on Amazon, two to five players. The Mind, $12 on Amazon, two to four players. The Crew, currently $11 on Amazon, three to five players, but special rules for two players. And Cahoots, two to four players, $15 on Amazon, all cooperative. Okay, now we're gonna look at some competitive games. The first one is one of my favorite games. And really for me, when I think about elegant design in a game, uh, this one has it, actually several of the games in this series has it. But okay, Fox in the Forest. This is a two player only trick taking game currently on Amazon for $12. And this is a tiny deck of cards. It's like 30, 33 cards. You deal out the cards to the two players and each trick is just two cards. One person leads and the next person plays a card and someone will win that trick depending on the rules for trick taking. Again, I'm not a huge trick taking fan, but boy, do I love this game. And it's got this very clever little twist where you wanna win the most tricks in the set, but not all of them. And so as you start playing, you start realizing, is my opponent trying to lose every trick to me? And how do I avoid now winning every trick? It's very clever. Each card has a slightly different rule. Uh, it's beautifully illustrated. Again, you could put this little deck of cards in your pocket, bring it to the pub, etc. Great game. Again, these are not in any particular order, but my next game is a game we picked up this year at Gen Con called Stick'em. It's uh, another trick-taking game, and it's a, there's a, a big element of take that in this game, and it is we had, we played this with my group at Gen Con and we laughed a lot. Essentially the little twist of this game is that each player has a color that unbeknownst to everyone else that they've chosen at the beginning of the game that they'll get penalized for having. 
So most cards you want to win of a trick, but if it's got cards of the color that's poison for you, you want to avoid winning that trick. So you're going around the table winning these tricks, most of which you don't care about, but some of which you really don't want to win. And you're trying to pick up what color is poison for each of my opponents? And how do I stick them with a little piece of poison, a little poison card when they don't want it? Very fun, very clever, thinky, little convoluted thinking about, I know what, that you know that I know that you want this, so you probably played a card to lose this trick. Very clever. Uh, so this one is $15, three to six players. Fox in the Forest was $12. Here is a sort of modern classic, no thanks. A very elegant, simple game. $12, three to five players. And it's got a little bit of a bidding element. Essentially, everyone's got a chips, a couple of chips in front of them, or however many you start with, that are sort of your currency. And one at a time, you auction off these cards. You take a card that goes from one to 15 or whatever they go, one to 30. And um, you put a card on the table and someone's gonna have to take it. And you go around. And if you don't wanna take it, you have to add one of your chips to the pile associated with this card. And whoever takes the card gets the card on the chips. And every card is a penalty, sort of negative points. But if you have a sequence of cards, then only the lowest one hurts you and the rest of them are just written off. So as these cards come out and people start collecting cards, certain people are really not gonna want certain cards and other people they'll be harmless for. And so the people that they're harmless for wouldn't, won't mind taking it, but they wanna see it go around the table and they wanna see people pay chips not to take it. So there's a little bit of push your luck, a little bit of deciding, well, I don't want this card, but I'll take it because it's got all this currency on it and I can use this to avoid other cards. Very clever, small, Beautiful, beautiful game. All right, my next selection here is Welcome to the Dungeon. They also make Welcome Back to the Dungeon, which is just as good. And this is $14, two to four players. It's a push your luck game, and a, but a very clever, funny, fun push your luck game. Essentially, you've got a deck of monsters that have different strengths and different special abilities. And then you've got a couple different scenarios, but for each scenario it has a set of cards of sort of weapons that the hero will take into the dungeon to defeat the monster. In the beginning, you set out all of the weapons for a hero and no monsters in the dungeon. And then you go around and you take turns. And on your turn, you can either look at a monster and put him in the dungeon and stay in the round or say, I'm out, I'm not, I withdraw my participation, I'm not gonna go into the dungeon. And when you add a monster to the pile, you also take one of the weapons that the hero is gonna go into the dungeon with. So over time, the monsters get harder to defeat and the uh, hero's weapons get weaker. And so you're always playing this push your luck of when you should pull out and withdraw and the last person left has to go into the dungeon with the weapons arrayed on the table. And they know a little bit about what's in the dungeon, but they don't know what other people put in. So it's got a little bit of that feel. You're trying to poison it, but not if you have to go in. Very clever, very fun, very straightforward, simple. And the different scenarios have different kinds of weapons. Very clever. Uh, next up is a game lots of people know about at this point in 2021 is Sushi Go. This is a great example of a card drafting game and maybe what you would call a point salad game, although point salad is the name of another game, which is good. But basically in this game, you've got to, you deal out the cards. You've got a whole deck. Each card has some special rules for how it scores. So some cards score for having a, a set of the same type some score for whoever has the most of this card, the least of this card, etc. And uh, at the start of the game or each round, you deal out the cards and on your turn, as you go around, you draft, you pick one of the cards for yourself and you pass the rest around to your neighbor and so on and it goes around. And it's a nice, clean, sort of boiled down version of a drafting game. At the end of the round, you look at your cards and you score them based on what they say. Some cards 
hold over till the end of the game, some go away. So you're basically trying to get a feel for what some, if that person's going for this, then I shouldn't go for this because I don't want to be competing with them. Or should I, you know, double down on this and scare away everyone else from trying to score it? It's just very clever. It's fun to have the different, different cards and try to figure out how to make them work in certain combinations. Sushi, Sushi Go is uh, currently $8 on Amazon for the base game, which I like better than the big puffed up party version and plays from two to five. And then the last game I don't have in front of me because I've sent it off to my niece. It's a game I would recommend for, especially for children, but, but kind of fun for adults to play with children as well. And that's Spot It. There's a bunch of different versions of it, but Spot It comes in a round tin. It's currently $8 for the normal game on Amazon. Plays from two to eight players, probably four or five. It's a sweet spot. But it's sort of a reaction time pattern recognition game. And the actual game, this small little tin box of cards, uh, comes with like six or seven different variations of games you can play, and they're all quite fun. And um, the gimmick is, with through a little bit of mathematics, every card has a bunch of pictures on it of objects, like eight pictures of objects, different rotated and sized differently. And for any pair of cards, any random pair of cards you pick, only they'll have one and only one matching image on the card, matching object picture. So all the games have this flavor of turning over cards and then trying to find as quickly as possible what the image that matches on two cards. So sometimes everyone turns over a card and they're trying to figure out which object is on the center card and their card. If they get it, they get it right. Sometimes you're trying to take from other people and it's got this very rapid uh, style game, very fun, lots of laughter, and young kids are great at it. And it's fun to play against young kids when they're so good at it. And that's Spot It, and that's the competitive games. Okay, it's time for party games, team games. We're going to start with one of my favorites, the favorite of many board gamers, and that is Codenames, a modern classic. This is... Uh, $12 currently on Amazon. There's also a pictures version and a duet two-player cooperative version, which I'll talk about um, later. Plays from two to eight or so, or more players in two teams. And it's basically a game of giving word clues. So you've got a tableau of 25 words laid out in a grid, a five by five grid. Divide into two teams. The clue giver on each team looks at a card. It shows them what words they're trying to get their team to guess and what, what word is a instant loss word if anyone on their team guesses it. And they're trying to come up with a clue, a single word clue that relates to as many words as they can that their list tells them their team should try to guess. So they might say something like animal three. And they're trying to say that three of the words in the tableau correspond to animals. And then the rest of the team will talk and discuss and debate and say, well, this is, our, we agree this one is surely an animal, but this one's only tangentially related to animals. Maybe we should guess it, maybe we should wait. And it's got some clever rules about how many guesses can be made and what happens when you're wrong. Picture version is the same except for the pictures. It is a, remarkably deep game and it's for adults but if you've got group that's even remotely into this idea of coming up with clever clues and often you'll find uh, certain people will like giving clues and certain people will uh, that's too much pressure for them but they can guess and discuss so most of the team can talk and work things out and play cooperatively it is a very deep tense enjoyable game and it's got moments where you're very proud of the clue you gave and moments where you slip up and you realize oh i should have seen that this word could have been connected and it's fun to watch people make connections that you didn't notice really good so this is currently 12 dollars on amazon the duet version which is a very very clever spin-off for two players playing cooperatively is a little bit more. It's actually my favorite version of Codenames. 
If you go to the Board Game Geek file section for Codenames Duet, you will find a downloadable set of print and play booklets of pre-made games that you can play on paper um, uh, using a tool that I wrote and is available open source on Board Game Geek. And you can, that's actually my preferred way to play it. So if it's just you and one other place, person that want to play, um, try my print and play version of Codenames Duet. Okay, next up is a party game called Say Anything. This is currently uh, going for $12, the anniversary edition, $12 on Amazon. Plays from three to eight players. Probably the more, the better, up to about six or seven or so. And it's part of this sort of genre of you ask a question, so you take turns going around. When it's your turn, you read a question from a list. It might be something like, what's the most interesting animal? Everyone else at the table has their little whiteboard. They write down their get, what they think you would say. Then you lay them all the people's uh, um, guesses or suggestions out on the table. Then the clue giver will indicate on a little dial which one of the ones in front of them they agree with most. And then everyone else will take turns betting on what they think the guesser, the person leading that round, is going to pick. And then you reveal and everyone gets points for matching. So you get points for guessing what the, the leader of that round picked and the leader will get points for people guessing them. And so you, there's a little bit of cleverness. You've got two chip tokens to bet with. Do you put them all on one? Do you put to spread them out? It's very clever and it's often very funny. People's answers are often deliberately hilarious and it's a great way to get to know people. Great, great party game. Okay, next up, another party game, this time a team-based party game called Time's Up. It also goes under other names like Monikers, I believe. Um, and it's a little bit like charades, but a more palatable, interesting version of charades. You split into two teams. Each team gets a set of cards. They're cards that you're trying to get your teammates to guess. And the sort of gimmick is that everything happens in three rounds. In the first round, you can say whatever you want for each card. So if you have a card like Eiffel Tower, you might say France, a uh, giant metal tall arch building, and you say whatever you want until one on your person and teammate, then you put it down, you go to the next card. If you don't think you're, they're gonna get it, you pass. But in the first round, you can say whatever you want. So almost all of them uh, get, get guessed in the time. But in the second round, you go back through them again, and you can only say one word, like France. And the people are trying to put together the clue, and the clues from the previous round, they're remembering because they're the same cards, and it's much faster, and sometimes you pass, and you have a time limit, of course. And then in the third round, you can't say anything, but you can act out something. You do it in charades, but because you're doing cards that you've already had two rounds going through, you can do very simple gestures and everyone remembers that, oh, that's probably the Eiffel Tower because we remember that. So that so it's the fact that they, they simplify by the time they get down to the third round that it makes the charade acting out part thing more enjoyable. And again, it's got that flavor of if you've got people who are more performative, they can do certain rounds, other people can do other rounds, and people who don't like that stuff can just be guessing. So there you have it. Time's up, $15, three or more players in two teams. Say anything, $12, three to eight players. Code names, $12, two to eight players in two teams. You can get the Code Names Duet Cooperative version print and play, download on BoardGameGeek for free, or buy any of the different Codenames versions. They're all good. So hopefully there was something on that list new to you. Again, as of December 12th, 2021, those are all available on Amazon.com for $15 or less and available for shipping by Christmas. But Amazon prices fluctuate wildly. They've got a computer trying to extract the most money from you. so they could go up or down. 
And there is no reason you have to buy any of these or even that you should buy any of these on Amazon. You can get them at your local board game store even better or order them on one of the popular online board game stores like Cool Stuff Inc. or Miniature Market, Card House, etc. Um, and I'll see you on the next video.